Close your eyes. Keep watch over your breath. And keep watch over your mind, keeping watch over the breath. Make sure it stays here, because there's no one else here to give you orders. It's your own concern for your own true happiness, your own sense of heedfulness. That's what motivates you to keep watch over the mind, to make sure it actually does what you intend it to do. It's in this way, as you develop this aspect of the mind, that you become more and more your own, your own refuge. You can actually take a checklist of the different kinds of fabrication the Buddha talks about. There's bodily ver fabrication, there's the breath. So how is your breath right now? There's verbal fabrication. What are you talking to yourself about right now? Is it the kind of talk you can depend on? Is it helpful, or is it leading you off someplace else? And finally, there's mental fabrication, the feelings that you're focusing on. In other words, you can focus on pleasure in a way that gives rise to wisdom, or you can focus on pain in a way that gives rise to wisdom. That relates more to your perceptions. What are the images you hold in your mind? Sometimes these are the most furtive, these are the most difficult to find, because they're often in the background. But if you can catch yourself in the terms of the, how you envision the breath to yourself or how you envision your position in the world to yourself, is there some, something wrong with the perception, something that's eating away, that's weakening you? Can you change your perception that, that strengthens you instead? These are the raw materials from which you fashion your own inner refuge. The ultimate refuge, of course, in nirvana doesn't have to be fashioned, but the path leading there does have to be fashioned. It's something you have to put together. So keep this checklist in mind. How is the breath? How are you talking to yourself? In other words, what are you directing your thoughts to, and what are the comments you're making on that topic? Can you either choose a better topic, or can you change the way you make comments? And in terms of the perceptions, if you feel you're being victimized, it's usually a, a prelude to victimizing other people. So if there's any sense of victim in there, just let it go. Try to focus on the image of your being more powerful, more in control using your power wisely, coming from a position of strength. Think of all those images the Buddha has of goodwill being like, like the earth, being like the river Ganges, being like the air, vast, something that no one can really have any effect on. You want to make sure your goodwill is that strong. If you can hold these perceptions in mind and engage in all the other kinds of fabrication in a skillful way, then you really can depend on yourself. But it's important that you remember these things. That's why we have to develop mindfulness. Otherwise, you can learn about these things and they just blow away. But you should keep them in mind that this is what you're shaping right now, either a self that you can depend on or a self that you can't depend on. Which do you want? You've got the tools, you've got the abilities to make yourself dependable, to make yourself your own refuge. So learn about them, and learn about them not only in the abstract, but also in, in practice. That way, when the things in the world outside become undependable, you still have got something dependable inside.